I'm this in conference will so, now be recorded. Um, wow, that's really uh, that light coming through there is really bad. Wait, wait, there we go. There we go. Is that better? That's better. That's pretty good. I might have to adjust that as the uh, as the sun kind of moves around. No, you're cool. You're cool. 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 So where are you at now? Uh, I live in the Twin Cities. Okay. Because I wasn't sure if uh, as far as Central Standard Time or not, or if uh, or if uh, where you were. So that's cool. Cool. Yeah, man. So, I'm at, I'm probably not very far from you. What seven hour drive? Yeah, my my uh, my aunt lives out there in uh, Minnesota, so. Uh, I haven't been out to see her yet, so I feel pretty bad. <laughs> I need to get out there. Well, I mean, can we can we really travel that much? You know, I mean, that's the the unfortunate part. Yeah, that is unfortunate, man. Well, I appreciate you doing this, man. No problem. No problem. You yeah. doing well? I am. Hold on, let me uh, move this out the way here. I just have to move this out there. Hold on, I just. My bad. My bad. I just. <laughs> Uh, I'm surprised you're displaying that with such pride. <laughs> we had a couple. Look, you man, you don't even have to get it. Wait, you have to pay and come back, man. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I should have expected that. Touche. Yeah. Touche. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I appreciate you taking a little time, and and um, I don't know if you watch a little bit of what i've been trying to do but um uh basically i just uh kind of go into it and kind of give a little intro as far as what i'm trying to do and hopefully we have some some young uh student athletes that are listening um but um yeah i guess let's just uh jump into it um, yeah let's do it cool so what's up everyone my name is pat brown i'm a financial advisor uh here in lawrence kansas with edmonds duncan investment advisors, um, played football at the University of Kansas a number of years ago and played outside linebacker and loved my time there at the university and became very passionate about uh, uh, financial literacy for student athletes. And that kind of led me down a path of uh, interviewing former student athletes uh, with the hopes that current student athletes would learn from their mistakes and some of their successes as well and form some of the habits that are beneficial uh, while they're in school and obviously after school and, and um, in hopes that it make for their, their lives to be um, a better situated. So I have my man, Ben Lieber here and uh, had the cyber stock you, man, which obviously didn't take much, man. It didn't take much at all. Uh, you were quite the man back in high school. You played running back, no doubt. I did. I did. I played running back and um, I played defense as well, but that was, you know, you know, back in the day when we played two ways, like I, I, I just, I took my time on defense. I took my rest on defense, and I just <laughs> concentrated on being being the glory guy carrying the football. Man, you had to be a big running back at six four. Uh, no, I was six. I was about six two. Yeah. Oh, okay. Still. Yeah. yeah. Still. Yeah. I was. I was tall for South Dakota man. Like we, that that was tall. Yeah. So uh, basically, all American in high school, uh, college came to University of uh, or K State. Um, that's when he moved to linebacker, all big, all two time, all big 12 selection, uh, finished a career with 216 tackles, 46 tackles for loss, 13.5 sacks. Man, you were a bad man. I hate to say it, man. It's pretty good. You're a later All American third team selection. So, um, again, my, my guest is Ben Lieber, um, linebacker for K State. And so I, I guess I, real quick before we kind of jump into it, I want to kind of get the definition of financial literacy. And I always do this because I'm under the impression that a lot of um, student athletes have this bad connotation of financial literacy it means I'm not the brightest or I'm not the smartest. And so financial literacy is a possession of a set of skills and knowledge that allows an individual to make and form an effective decisions with all their financial resources. And um, I liken it to obviously being a student athlete because you already have those habits uh, that you have in place for being a student athlete and, and you know, having that structure as far as uh, what you do in the weight room, what you do in the field, what you do in the classroom, et cetera. And so having said that, um, if you can kind of talk about your thoughts and, and when you became 
freshman, sophomore year, um, did you have any exposure to, uh, you know, savings, budgeting, credit, or anything of that nature? Uh, no, not really. Um, I had, my parents had set me up with a, a small checking account when I was in high school, you know, at the time when you actually had to balance the check book and, and sit down and do the math and do all your deductions and all that stuff. Um, but that was, you know, that was just a few, you know, maybe a couple hundred bucks, you know, and it's just like, you just, you're, you're learning how to be a little bit more responsible with your money and the power of money. And really, I think how, how far money doesn't go, you know, like <laughs> right. you, you think that you have, you know, 200 bucks at the time and you're in your checking account and you're like, I'm living large, man. And right. then you go out and you, you know, you, you entertain yourself, you take your date out or something like that. And all of a sudden they're like, wait a minute, I, I don't have, I don't have a lot of money. Uh, right. So it, very, very limited. I mean, kind of, as you kind of set this thing up, same thing with football, like football in high school is very limited. You know, you just kind of see the ball, go get the ball. Yeah. Um, you know, you hit this hole and there's no really true understanding about how things work and how they're interconnected. You just know that here's football, here's a game. We know the general rules of it. And the same thing with, with financial literacies. I, I obviously know what money is. I know the power of money, but when it comes to how to handle debt, uh, how to proactively think about when your next check is coming in and when that, where that money has got to go. And, you know, I certainly didn't know anything about taxes. I didn't really know how interest rates worked when it came to credit cards. So, you know, by and large, I was, uh, I was fairly dumb. I hear you. You and me, you and me both, man. So uh, the decisions that you did make while you're in college, was it more or less trial and error as far as, you know, I spent too much this weekend. I have absolutely no money, <laughs> you know, two days after I get my stipend check. I mean, pretty much, you know, I, I did try to budget pretty well with the scholarship check. Um, you know, I relied on my parents in the first, the first year we had to live on campus in the dorms. And so we, you know, I'm, I'm sure that was probably the same way with a lot of student athletes. Uh, if you're on scholarship that Kansas state made you stay in the dorms. And so you did not get a scholarship check. And so I relied on my parents still my first year of college for, you know, a couple hundred bucks here and there on the, uh, during the, during the month. And that was not always a guarantee. Mm. You know, my parents didn't have a lot of money, you know, they, they um they worked they both worked and they did everything they could to support us but it's not like you had a lot of money coming in and i didn't have a credit card at the time mm -hmm. and i was kind of told like don't don't jump in that credit card scheme you know you're gonna there's gonna be multiple credit card services on campus asking you to to, <laughs> to enroll and, and all this other stuff and i was told yep. early on don't don't jump into that trap right away um and hold on i'll try to work on my there we go yeah. um so when i got out my sophomore year and lived off campus that's when i started getting the scholarship check and you quickly realize that you know it is a bit, it is a bit more of a perpetual thing and you can get into a rhythm of okay this month i'm gonna have you know four hundred dollars but then what's my rent what's the utilities um what do i need to spend and you do sort of get caught up on how to budget but it's still not it's still not great you're only thinking about you know a couple of weeks ahead you're not thinking about months ahead about where you want your 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 balance sheet to be yeah 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 so then um again thinking back what were you say were some of your worst financial decisions you made in college and what were some of your best that you made well i would say getting a credit card was like one of the worst i mean <laughs> to be honest i mean i i eventually did get one of those credit cards and you realize that um it feels good to to purchase something in that instantaneous moment but then you do that over and over again and you realize that bill's coming and if you don't yep. pay that thing off that that the, that the interest rate is real you know that's a yeah. that's a real thing it's not just some some number they put on there um, <laughs> right you know doing those doing those stupid cd things that i think we all got caught up in with columbia house and bmg i forgot all about those man i forgot all about those wow that was that you took me back on that one you know you, uh, buy, no, you, you get another 13 for free or something like that oh yeah yeah they get you right away with the 
hey, here's 15 or 20 free CDs when you enroll. And then it's, then it's just one CD every month. And you're like, oh, I can do that. I can right. do one CD a month. No, man. Um, you know, just, th just things like that. Just, just being silly. And then, um, you know, it always seemed like at the start of the month, you know, when you got your scholarship check and you felt, you felt like you were rolling in the dough, it was, let's go out, you know, drinks are on me. And, you know, it's just, it's just things like that. You just, you you're feel balling. like you're, you're, you're balling a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So would you say that you've done, you did anything that was, you were considered a good financial decision back then at all? Or was it just obviously hard to say, you know, being young? No, it's hard. I, I, no, I don't think I, I don't think I made a smart financial decision. It's not like I looked at my, my situation and said, all right, let me, let me invest in this 401k. Let me get in this Roth IRA. Let me, let me talk to somebody about what I can do to set myself up, even if it's 25 to 50 bucks a month. Um, you know, you, you kind of hear those small numbers and you think, how is that going to help in the future? Right. But, you know, you get the you get the right education about these programs and you realize that if you if you do that and it's just sort of taken out of your check or it's automatically deducted somehow some way where you're not actually physically writing the check every month. That's powerful when you add it up in the course of a year and then your college career, you know, three or four years down the road and you realize, hey, man, I, I got, you know, I put, you know, two thousand, three thousand dollars in this thing and. And here's what's going to do for me when I don't touch this thing here in the next, you know, 15 to 20 years. And I think just getting started with that um, and not and, and, and honestly not understanding what stocks are like, I didn't understand the stock market at all. Even mm -hmm. when I was taking finance classes as a business major, I didn't understand wow. what that meant. Wow. Um, it, it was. And maybe I'm just a bad student. Maybe that's just it. No, 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 I. I... You know, in all honesty, um, I don't think that's the case. I think, you know, even economics classes and so forth, I think they give such a, um, a different version of it versus, I don't want to say real life, but it really doesn't give you necessarily a hands-on approach to it. Um, so I, I see that from time to time doing a lot of these little interviews. I see that from time to time, a lot of these guys did have, uh, you know, an education as far as economics major or something like that. And still, you know, the, the decision was still the same or similar. Uh, so I don't know if these interviews are going to help. Hopefully, <laughs> you know, seeing someone that has been there and done that, I've always felt would probably more, I think it would resonate more with current student athletes, you know, especially see, a, you know, Ben has obviously been there, done that once a league. Um, to hear him say, okay, well, yeah, I wish I would have done X, Y, Z. I think that would resonate a little bit better. That's what I'm under the impression, hopefully. So. No, I think that's that's no, that's 100 percent correct. I I do wish in it's it's like a lot of things in life. You know, as you, the older you get, <clears throat> you realize that you get a little bit wiser mm -hmm. and you realize that there are certain things that you wish you have taken more importance of and and, and prioritize more when you were younger. And I think understanding just how the financial world works um, and, and not and not in a not in like a, an actual class setting. I mean, I, I say that, but yet I, I think that the class setting is needed, but there needs to be a class where it's real world finances and real world adult money making and money, um, money sucking decisions. Yeah. And it's not just a finance 101 class. It's not just an econ 101 class. When you learn about the totality of how the banking world works or the financial world works, there needs to be a real world application where you are put through the paces of, hey, you're an adult now. This is, we're gonna do a, a simulation of, this is your life. You're gonna, we're gonna give you a, a $500, $1,000 paycheck every month. Mm -hmm. um, we're, gonna, we're gonna track how you spend, what you spend on, what you invest in. Um, We'll, we'll give you a, a course on, on what investments look like and how it works and different, and different vehicles that you can do. I, I, I just think instead of putting all these financial services in these categories and these classes, yeah. there really needs to be an aggregated class where it's real life. And, and you can talk to student athletes and regular athletes as freshmen. That's almost mandatory. You know, yep. it's not an elective class. It's like, hey, this is a mandatory class on how to be an adult. Like we're adulting now. Like yep. you're out of the yeah. house, you know, yep. you want to use the term adulting, 
it's not just a term and a phrase, like there's actually some meaning behind it. Um, and maybe the, and maybe you guys do that, you know, maybe that's, a, that's, that's a part of um, services that are out there at universities now that, that maybe they do take that more seriously and, and more of a hands-on approach. But in my, from my experience, it's not like that at all. Yeah, for my, the same thing. And, um, you know, I check from time to time, all this started, um, not to get into the ways, all this started when I finished up school, I had some type of experimental class uh, called Transition from College to the Workplace. It was just for athletes. Uh, so we had basketball, football, uh, baseball, et cetera. And it just became embarrassing because I was a communications major. And so a lot of stuff is just going right over my head. And so a lot of some of my uh, teammates who've had those conversations with their parents, they understood a little bit better about stocks, bonds, mutual funds, et cetera. Um, so that's when I kind of became passionate about just really understanding it and started reading on my own. And so all that being said, as time went on and I would check back with the university, I never heard of a class that would, like you said, kind of aggregate everything, put everything into one uh, type of class setting to where you're adulting versus you know, book level uh, right. you know, learning. And so I think it would be fantastic if there was such a course. Um, I definitely think with athletes, it's important because I think athletes are a little bit different because of how we're brought to, you know, the university and then just the time constraints and so forth. And, you know, certainly uh, some athletes are going to go on and go on to the next level. And so if they're not equipped with those habits, you know, it's going to be detriment, you know, to their career and you know some of them obviously do well and they they um they hire trusted professionals whether cpas attorneys uh financial advisors but you know some of them don't they end up i'm, I'm preaching to the choir some of them end up you know hiring their uncle joe who was a seventh grade you know biology teacher or something like that so um yeah so i can don't want to get on into the weeds about that too much but um so looking back in college now uh, what do you wish you would have done differently in regards to dealing with your money? Would it have been not to get a credit card? Would it have been, like you said, to kind of look at a Roth IRA or something like that? No, I, I think, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to put it out there that you should have, should avoid learning lessons. You know, the, the credit card is a great learning tool. You know, it, I think it's, I think it's, it's okay in the course of life to, um, to jump into something like that and have that real emotion of looking at your statement at the end of the month and you said, Oh crap, how am I going to pay this? Or, Oh my God, if I don't, if I don't make this minimum payment, this is what it looks like next month, you know? And that's, I, I think that those, those are lasting learning lessons that people need to have and hopefully they do it in a more responsible way. But I think, I think it should be limited to one credit card. You know, I, I don't know if there's a way that financially we can share information. And I know that there's some privacy things, but even look at our, look at our healthcare. It's taken us how long for people to go to one pharmacy, get a, get a prescription, and then they can bounce around and go to multiple pharmacies and there's no checks and balances. Well, now there is, you know, now everybody shares that information. So they put your name in and you're like, Hey, you just filled this Oxycontin a week ago. Right. You know, right. now you're at a different, you know, so when it comes to finances, especially with college kids, there almost should be a limit as to how many credit cards you can you can get, and um, you that's should be able idea. to have one one credit card. That's it. Sorry, like we're not going to give you another one because we're we're not going to allow you to rack up the, this debt. You can get in enough trouble with one. You don't need three or four. And um, so that I think that's a that's a decent step in the right direction because I. I do think you need to feel you need to feel that pain of of making mistakes, but not making yeah. mistakes to where it compounds into into three or four other mistakes. You um, that's a really good idea. Um, you know, when I do these talks and I do talk to other athletes, I've always thought it was important to look at getting a credit card and very similar to what you said, just get one credit card and actually have a low limit on that credit card. Um, the main thing is just building that credit history. Because as you go through uh, college and you graduate and you obviously move on to, you know, get a job and trying to get a home and, and a car, if you don't have any credit, yeah, I mean, it's a negative against you. I mean, you're going to be paying more in interest versus the person that did, 
you know, have a credit card, have a good credit history. And so I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I never thought about just limiting, if there was a way just to limit college uh, kids to just one card, that would be actually a really good idea. Um, yeah, that's a real good idea. So um, the habit, tell the habits that you formed in college affected life after college or has it for you? Um, you know, that's, that's difficult to answer because, you know, I was in a unique situation where, you know, I, I got drafted in the NFL and, you know, all of a sudden when I was in high school and I thought $200 in the, in the bank was a lot of money. And then all of a sudden you get your first, you get your first check and you're just like, holy cow. Like, <laughs> um, you know, you know, now, now we can really go have a nice steak dinner. Um, you know, it's, it's tough because there's not a lot of things that I learned in college that really, really set me up to handle that sort of responsibility. And, and from a student athlete that was fortunate enough to play at the next level and, and have that sort of that problem, I was ill-equipped to handle that. I really was. Um, you know, you go back, you go back to what you're talking about hiring the right financial advisor versus your uncle or versus, <laughs> you know, a family, a family member. You know, that sort of education needs to take place as well with student athletes. They're looking to go beyond this, the college level. I mean, how many, how many leeches are out there and, yeah. and how did all, all the pitfalls that there are and understanding taxes. I think that's, you know, and, and maybe as I'm talking about this, that's the one area that I wish we learn more about, not just the power of your spending money and what mm -hmm. credit cards look like and interest looks like, but taxes, man. I mean, you got to be aware of what your taxes look like when it comes to a state, your state level and the federal level. And yeah. what a deduction, how do deductions really work? And, and understanding that when you sign, and this is applicable to everybody, you know, it's just, yeah. you just have to figure out what your tax bracket is. But when it came to us as a, as a professional football player, you had your, your 3% agent tax that came off your gross money. You had your state tax, which I was in California. And so that was in the upwards of like, you know, 10%, 11%. And then we were like in the 37% tax bracket on the federal level. So as you round up, we're basically taking home 50% of what our gross pay is. And to really understand that, like, I, I try to tell young, young football players now, I said, listen, guys, if you sign a million dollar contract, that's only $500,000 of actual spending power. Yeah. You know, $500,000 is going to be paid to your agent, state and federal taxes. That's gone. That's, that's fictional money. You don't have that money. So if you go out and buy a hundred thousand dollar car, that's 20% of your, of your paycheck yeah. that you're going to go spend on a car. And then you want to go, but you want to go buy your, your parents a house. You want to repay <laughs> them. You want to do something nice for them, which, which I'm all for, you know, take, right. show some, show some appreciation for the people that got you there. That's fine. But understand that you only have half the money you think you really have. And, and in the, and in the future, and in the future, if you want to go out and buy a pair of shoes and you want to buy that, that $350 pair of Yeezys, well, guess mm. what? You got to earn seven hundred dollars to buy that. That's because powerful, man. That's so everything that you buy, double that, and that's how, that's what you have to earn to get that money to to make that purchase. So, um, I think just the 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 power of of tax. I mean, it's it's amazing how much what it what it costs us to walk the streets of America. <laughs> that's crazy, man. That when you break it down like that, that's crazy. That is crazy. Um, but it's good. It's good that uh, and again, I hope hope some student athletes are listening to this. Man, this is good. Um, so what are some of the pitfalls? You actually mentioned this, uh, but what are some of the pitfalls that you would hope your story could prevent to young student athletes out there? So, you know, the young Ben Labors out there, the young, you know, kids that are hopefully watching this. What do you what do you hope that they would, you know, get from your story? Well, I can, um, you know, I don't, I don't have a problem saying that, um, you know, my first financial advisor was a recommendation from, from my agents. And, 
you know, that's, there's, there's another, there's another tricky thing when it comes to athletes, you know, we were, you're told by the, uh, at the, at the rookie symposium that you should really limit the number of people under the same umbrella. So your, your agent shouldn't have a contact with your financial advisor and your tax guy should be different than your, than, than in in-house person at the financial services place. Um, and, and I just took the easy way. I said, I trusted my agents. My agents are, are, are great people. They are really good agents. I'm still good friends with them now. But I yeah. said, hey, uh, I need, a, I need a, a financial guy. And they're like, hey, here's this guy. Uh, there's seven or eight guys that use him as well. Super good dude, whatever. And that's, mm-hmm. all, that's, the, only, that's the only vetting process I went through. And for the better half of nine years working with this guy, 10 years working with this guy, um, you know, I, I never pressed him on, hey, your, your percentage, what does that look like in real dollars? Like, what are you actually making from me? Come to find out, his, his whole organization, and he was with a big bank. Like, he's with, you know, he's, he's with a major institution. It's not like he's got this small institution. Yeah. You know, there was some percentage points that weren't adding up. And, mm-hmm. and it's not like, I, I don't think it was anything illegal, but I fired his ass because he couldn't give me a straight answer. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, man, like... I, I just went through nine or 10 years of just kind of having my head in the sand and not pressing this guy on exactly where he was making his money from me. Yeah. And who, who knows, you know, how much, how much extra a couple hundred, couple thousand dollars here and there that, that he and the organization was making off of every trade that they made off of every recommendation. Um, so my advice to anybody, and I'm not saying if you're a professional athlete or not, because right. everybody should have should have a financial advisor in their life. Everybody, it doesn't matter. Like I don't care. If, I don't care if they're just helping you set up a few IRAs and a 401k. Like everybody needs to have somebody to help them, guide them in a in a tricky situation. Ask them point blank, how much are you making? Mm. Like not just percentage point. Like what is your final final net net? What are you taking? to to provide your services from me if they can't give you a straight answer gone leave get out like it. find somebody else i like it i like it no you're, you're absolutely right um i heard someone else said the exact same thing uh, he actually said that he audited uh, his advisor every um every year you have a third party of you know audit his advisor so that's uh again that's that's powerful um so bonus questions so we're, you know, towards the end here, and you touched on this a number of times, and, and I meant to mention this uh, earlier uh, when I was introducing, me. so you, again, got drafted and uh, played a number of years in the league. So uh, as you made that transition from college to the pros, what did that look like from, like I said, budgeting, savings? Uh, how did it, was it kind of clunky? Did it, did you transition fairly well? Um there are definitely some things I wish I would have done differently. Um, the number one thing is I, I don't know if I really subscribe to this idea that you should acquire as much equity in real estate as they say. Mm-hmm. And, and the only reason I say that is because in my experience, homes don't appreciate as fast as they maybe tell you on paper. And, and there are fees in which, you know, there's real estate fees and all this stuff. And at, at the end of the day, I tell a lot of, now this is my advice to professional athletes and professional football players is mm-hmm. do not buy a house until you know exactly where you're going to put your roots. Mm-hmm. And, and I was under the assumption and I was giving the advice of, for sure, if you're going to be there for three or four years, go buy a home buy a home because it's going to appreciate and blah, 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 blah. Right. There's a lot, there's a lot of headache with home ownership. Like, I don't think that we were ready. My wife and I were ready for all the other adulting things that take place when you own a home. And, and we, and we got out of ours um, after four years and yeah, we made a little bit of money, mm-hmm. but it probably wasn't worth the down payment, you know, putting 20% down. I mean, yeah. do do that calculation. Okay, if I'm putting 20% down, what's that what's that look like in rent 
a nice place that I could I could be at um, for the next three or four years. Maybe it's the same. And in, and in some cases, it probably is the same. So if I'm going to be throwing 20% at a home and maybe not get any appreciation back or 20% in rent, yes, I know I'm not going to get that back, but I'm free and clear. I don't have taxes to pay. I don't have, I don't have to buy a lawnmower. I don't have to do all, you know, I don't have to do all these other things that are going to take up my, my, my mental space and my right. brain capacity and it's way less stress. And so I would say my suggestion for a lot of guys, at least in the professional athlete world is really evaluate where you want to put your roots. And maybe the home that you buy is back in your hometown where you know you want to be. Yeah. And if that's where you want, if that's where you want to build your equity, then yes, do that now. And then just rent a small place or, or do something for the time that you're, you're playing with your team. Um, but I, I think that home ownership can be a slippery slope. And until you really, really know where you want to be, um, I would say rent. Renting is fine. And um, the, other, the other advice is never, never buy outright buy a depreciating asset. You like a car? Yeah. If you like that car, man, that's great. And if that car you want to treat yourself, that's a hundred thousand dollar Mercedes. Don't don't put don't give that dealership a hundred thousand dollars. Don't do that. That's not that's not a baller move. You know, no, the baller move is to probably lease that sucker, yep. trade it in after three years, pay the higher payments, and pocket and and pocket the uh, the seventy thousand dollars that you were gonna <laughs> waste on on purchasing that car. Because guess what, you're gonna get rid of that you're gonna get rid of that car in three or four years anyway because you just yeah. will. My man, absolutely, absolutely. Um, man, I again, I just appreciate uh, your honesty and just appreciate your time with this. Um, so, college pros, tell the guys what you're doing now. So again, student, I, mean, I know a lot. Of, and again, I, I felt to mention this up front. I mean, you're commentating because that's where I met uh, Ben. Is um, he was commentating with a buddy of mine. Um, Brian Custer, uh, they did a game here in, in Lawrence, Kansas. So I, had, of course, I had to give Ben a hard time. But tell the guys what you're doing now, man. Uh, so yeah, like you're saying, Pat, I, I I do color commentary for Fox Sports doing college football. Um, so I've done uh, several KU games this year uh, mm -hmm. as well. Which I I will say that as as hard as it is sometimes to spin the positive for the, for the team <laughs> right now. Uh, <laughs> It, it's crazy how many good athletes they have on that team. Yeah. I'm like, you, their backfield's pretty good. Seems like some of the young receivers are pretty good. Yeah. Obviously, you got to figure out the quarterback situation. Um, you, you know, you got to win the game in the trenches. I mean, they got to get, they got to do a better job of recruiting some linemen and getting some, some, some better guys up front. But you look at the skill positions of both offense and defense, you're like, damn. Pretty good. These guys can, they, they have some talent. They have a lot of talent on the team. They just gotta, they gotta, they gotta win the, the physical game in the trenches. And I think they're going to be formidable. Um, but anyway, so I do commentating for Fox Sports, and so I travel around every every week um, doing those games. And then I also am the sideline radio sideline reporter for the Minnesota Vikings. I live here in the Twin Cities, and uh, this was uh, this is where we call home. I spent five years playing for the team. I uh, spent my final year in St. Louis with the Rams, but uh, we came back here and um, all my kids go to school here. So we're deeply involved in, in the Twin Cities. And so I, I work with the Vikings on, on numerous radio and TV media deals. Um, but my main gig with them is the, the sideline reporter for the, for the flagship radio station. So it's a lot of football during the course of the, the football season. Um, and that's it. You know, I, I, I lend my services to um, my time to St. Jude as well. I'm the, I'm the chair yeah. and the host for our, our big uh, our big event in the spring here in the Twin Cities. Um, mm -hmm. So it's another passion project of mine to to volunteer my time helping out St. Jude as well. Awesome, 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 man. Well, can't say enough good things about you. I, I hate you, but uh, you the man. And I appreciate you. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to do this, and I look forward to hopefully once this Rona thing is over, seeing you on the you know, commentating here at KU again, man. Uh, I know. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy it. I I like I like uh, talking to Miles and his staff. I just there's that part. Even though I'm a K State grad, there's a part of me that that 
I really do want KU to be good. Like, yeah, it's it's beneficial for everybody. Yeah. I mean, we all we we have this Big Twelve pride where we kind of get we kind of get crapped on a little bit because everybody thinks that we don't play defense and we're very top heavy with just you know Oklahoma and Oklahoma State and Texas. Right. I try to tell people, man, that the parity in this conference, um, it's it's impressive. You know, every every week a Texas Tech can beat you. I mean, look what's going on with Iowa State right now. Yep. So I, I want KU, to, I want KU to be good. So we have this conference in which you can't, you can't mess around. You can't fool around with us at all. Like our, our seven, eight teams are going to be, you know, two number two or three teams in other conferences. Cause we're just, we're that good top to bottom. Yeah. I hear you, brother. I hear you, man. Well, cool, man. Well, I'll let all you right. get going. All right. Good to see you. You too, man. Thanks again for the time. No problem. See ya. Yep. Yep. Bye-bye.